Hi everyone, welcome to video 4 of chapter 3. In this video, we will go through an example of the pivoting process for a set of constraints related to linear programming, and we will discuss related issues. Okay, let's get started. We are going to look at this example that's that's here. So let's say this is a constraint of a linear programming problem. So I have the first constraint is um, x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 plus x4 equals 6. This is labeled as 1, equation 1, constraint 1. And the second one is 3x2 plus x3 plus 8x4 is 3. And that's number 2. And we want to go through a pivoting process. Okay, so first step, we choose to pivot with the x1 in equation 1. So remember, the process involves in two goals. One is to remove all other x1s from all other equations, meaning the x1 term shall be 0 here, which is already the case. And the second is to make the coefficient 1 in front of this variable where you are pivoting, which is also good. So actually, there's nothing to do. It's ready. Okay, step 2. Now we choose to pivot with the x2 in equation 2. Okay. So we would want to make the coefficient here starting with 1 in front of x2 and we would also like to remove the x2 from equation 1. So some details are the following. We can do the following. In order to remove the x2 in equation 1, we could multiply equation 2 by negative 1 half and this will be negative x2 and then add that equation on top of equation 1, and then this term becomes 0. And we replace equation 1 with that. Okay, so that's summarized here. Equation 2 multiply with negative 1 third, and add that on top of equation 1, and replace it with equation 1. Okay, so re replace equation 1 with that. Okay, and if you do that, and this is what you get. Okay, so this term is 0, as uh, promised, and then this term here becomes um, negative one third plus two, which you get that five over three, and then you get negative eight over three plus one, you get negative five over three, and then you multiply this by one third, you get ne negative one, add on top of six, you get five. Okay, and then the second thing, take equation two multiply it by one third and put it back into equation two. So basically make this coefficient one. So if this is one, and then this is one third, we see here, and this is eight third, and then this is one, okay? And then this is what we have. So we see that after we have pivoted with x1 and x2, we see that x1 only appears in equation 1 where you pivot it. It doesn't appear any, in any other equation. And x2 only appears in equation 2, and it doesn't appear in any other equations. But then x3 and x4 could appear in both equations. Okay, so we would like to introduce some terminologies this system that we have obtained here, these are called in canonical form, which is in red here. So this is in canonical form. And if you say a system is in canonical form, you need to specify the basic variables. And these are the variables that you pivoted with. So here, the basic variables are x1 and x2. Okay, so two an introduction of uh, two definitions of terms: canonical form and basic variables. Okay, 
And the other variables, x3 and x4, here they are not pivoted, and these are called non-basic variables. Right? So three um, terminologies, canonical form, basic variables, and non-basic variables. Now let's take a look at some more um, meanings or usages of uh, this canonical form. Okay, so this is the canonical form we obtain, obtained from the previous pivoting process. Once we have had that, we see that in equation one, we could move the non-basic variables, those terms, to the right-hand side and express the basic variable in terms of the non-basic one, which becomes here. So x1 can be written as 5 minus these. These are coming from the, the left-hand side. And similarly, x2, which is a basic variable, can be expressed in terms of the non-basic one by moving these two terms to the right-hand side, which is here. So you can say one way to write the solutions of this system would be x1 equals to that and x2 equal to that. That is, the basic variables are expressed in terms of a function of the non-basic variables, okay? where the non-basic variables x3 and x4 are arbitrary. You can choose any pair value of x3 and x4 and you can use this expression here to compute x1 and x2 and these will be a solution for the system. Okay, so you know there are infinitely many solutions. Among all of these solutions there is one that's of uh, particular interest. Okay, so I should say one particularly interesting solution would be the following. So in the above expression, I am going to set x3 and x4, the non-basic variables, to be zero. If these two are chosen to be zero, then the basic variables will basically take the value on the right-hand side because then these are all zero. So x1 will be 5, x2 will be 1. Okay, so this is one solution. Now, um, I want to call your attention to one item. We said we are building connections to linear programming, so these are actually constraints. If they are, and then we know the variables are all restricted, that is, we would have to require that they are all non-negative. Okay, so restrict it here. Okay, so let's summarize. Once you have put the system of constraints in the canonical form, one can find a particularly interesting solution by doing the following. One can set all the non-basic variables to zero. And then the basic variables they would take the value on the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so that's one solution. And this solution is of particular interest, as you will see later on. So we give a name. We call this a basic solution. Okay, so another term here will be calling basic solution a lot. And now, or if in addition all the variables in this solution is also non-negative, that is, this solution is also feasible, then we call this a basic feasible solution. Okay? So two terms, a basic solution or a basic feasible solution. This we'll be using over and over later on. Okay, then some remarks are in place. I would like to remark that, first of all, not all basic solutions are feasible. You might find a basic solution in the canonical form, you put it in, but then some terms are negative. 
and that's no good. And second remark, for a given constraint system of LP problem, there can be many basic feasible solutions even. Okay? We will see some examples of these remarks in the next slide. Okay, let's go back to the example that we have been working on. So, what we did was we pivoted x1 in equation 1 and x2 in equation 2, and we found a basic solution which is also feasible. Now, we try to pivot a different variable. Let's say we will pivot x1 in equation 1, but we now choose to pivot x4 in equation 2. Okay? So we have done so much pivoting already, so many examples. Um, I will be a little bit brief. So what you can do is you make this coefficient 1 by and multiply equation 2 with 1 eighth, which is what you get here. And then you can um, subtract equation 1 um, by this, this second equation to, to get the x4 0 in that term. Okay, so and then you get these uh, fractions. Okay, so now you see x1 and x4 here are the basic variables and x2 and x3 are the non-basic variables. Therefore, the basic solution would be the following. The basic variables would take the right-hand side, the corresponding one. So x1 will get this, and then x4 will be eight, uh, 3 over 8. And the non-basic variables are 0. Okay? And then we see that this basic solution is non-negative, and therefore it's also feasible. Okay, so you see that for the same system, as this one, we have actually found two basic feasible solutions using different variables as the basic variables. Therefore, a, a basic feasible solution for the system is not unique. They can be multiples of them. Now let's play around a little bit more with this system. What's stated here is the one that we pivoted in the previous example, put x1 and x4 as the basic variable. Now, if we want to change, we want to take x2 as the basic variable and remove the x1 there, then we could pivot x2 in equation 1 prime in the above system, okay? By um, multiply the equation with the um, 8 over 5 to make this 1, which we get here. And then um, we want to remove the x2 here. That can be achieved um, by multiply the first equation with negative 3 over 5 and then add on top of the second one. Okay, um, And that's what we get. This is what you will get if you do that. Yeah. And then we see we have the two basic variables, x2 and x4. Then the basic solution will be x2 is 9, x4 is negative 3, and the two non-basic variables, x1 and x3, they're 0. So is this basic solution feasible? So are they all non-negative? No, because we see that x4 here is minus 3, which is less than 0. So this is a basic solution which is actually not feasible. Okay, so this example um, showed us um, the complexity of a possible algorithm that we need to develop. That is, we have to be careful in choosing the basic variables. We want to choose them in a way such that in 
that choice will in the end end up with a feasible solution as a basic solution. Okay, But we know if we're not careful, the basic solution might not be feasible. Okay, so this is the final um, remark of this video. So based on this discussion, we see that we now need an algorithm, actually, that will find basic solutions that stay in the feasible region. Okay, so we can have one basic solution, and we can change a basic variable and move to another basic solution. And when we do that, we need to have an algorithm to make sure that the new one will still be feasible. So all these solutions should in stay in the feasible region. Okay, and uh, so we're looking into more and more details of the linear programming problems and uh, we pick up more pieces and then in the end we can design an algorithm. Okay, so that's all for this video. Hope you liked it and I'll see you next time.